Hello and welcome to Dumi's Daily Grind. My name is Dumi and thank you so much for joining me today. I have created this channel to share my life experiences, inspirations I've found from others, learnings I have earned and things I have been taught throughout various periods of my life, especially the ones related to sobriety, finding serenity and general mental health topics with spiritual growth at the forefront. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for joining me today. It is another special day and another special video uh, that I've got for you today. I am doing an interview with um, a friend of mine, I would say, somebody I met um, about a year or so ago and um, somebody that I have found inspiration from um, as I got to know him. So I asked him if he could appear on the channel and he kindly agreed to do so for me. So I would like to welcome today Tato. And Tato is going to speak to us about his experience with mental health and um, and everything that comes around mental health issues. We may also touch on a little bit on spirituality um, and perhaps a little bit on, on recovery. So thank you so much for joining me, Tato, today. May you please introduce yourself. Hi. Hi, do I say hi to everyone or just hi to me? Um, it's up to you. I, <laughs> hi, I am Tato um, and I'm really glad to be here with Dumi. Um, don't know what's going to come out of this, um, but hopefully some good content that people will enjoy and that, can pe that people can resonate with. Um, yeah. That is me. Fantastic. So, Don, <laughs> would you please let us know a little bit about yourself? Um, so, that question of who are you has been a question that's plagued me um, throughout my life, right? Um, because I actually never knew who I was. But I knew my ego had an idea of who I am, and I would define myself according to my ego, I think. Um, and it was all external stuff, right? It was the results I got from high school and varsity. It was my looks, people I associated myself with. It was, it was pretty ego-driven, and that's how... I would, I had defined myself then. Um, and it got me into trouble, right? Because everything we say we are will be tested, um, especially these very shallow things. And shallow things can never stand any test, really. So the easiest way to define myself right now that I can actually say consistently is I'm a child of God. Um, it's not giving much insight. Um, but I think, yeah, I am a child of God. That's who I am. Um, I am the, the relationships I have um, with everybody that I interact with um, in any uh, scenario. Uh, my family, my colleagues, um, a stranger on the streets, uh, friends, um, even you, you know, who I am is defined by the relationship we have. So it's pretty fluid, um, but it is all contained in God and people. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, um, but it is that. Um, and that's who I am. 
Fantastic. Is it, is it vague? I hope it's not too vague. <laughs> no, no. But it's... I think, I think it's, it's, it's difficult for me to say that, like, I am a go-getter. I am ambitious, you know. Um, I am the kind of person, you know, when anything is given to me, you know, and I find it challenging and I go for it. I don't <laughs> know how to say <laughs> things like that. I find it... I find it embarrassing when anyone says anything like that um, <laughs> to describe themselves in those terms. It's uncomfortable um, because are you always a go-getter? Look, you just lost a close friend. You just lost a sibling. Yeah, I'm a go-getter. I mean, that's not, it's not appropriate, <laughs> you know? So I think who we are and who we say we are needs some rooted consistency um otherwise it's not who we are it's more like how we survive and that's a different conversation altogether but yeah yeah that's um that's a very interesting way of of describing yourself actually because um you and i um are black South Africans, I think, if I haven't gotten your race incorrect. And I'm uh, Irish. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so um, as black South Africans, um, we define ourselves in various uh, ways. You know, we define ourselves through our family, we define ourselves with the people that we uh, socialize with and um, it's quite interesting that your your response is quite interesting because I am currently doing a um, a session um, in in class where we're talking about interpersonal and intercultural um, communication and having to understand who people are based on their description of who they are versus what you um, see them as um, and giving them that respect. So I really appreciate the way you you define um, who you are. And with that said, I, I, I am interested to find out why do you want to do this? Why are you um interested in, in in speaking out um regarding the issues that we are going to be speaking about today um i guess i want to be famous um maybe your <laughs> your channel will be picked up by netflix um <laughs> so i don't know i find that um we generally don't speak about ourselves in this kind of format, right? There are very few places in our lives where we have a very structured way of speaking about ourselves that can actually be helpful to other people. Um, I think that my story is important. I think that everybody's story is important. Um, I think that you... People like you are important for bringing these stories out into the broader societal spectrum. I don't usually talk like that. Um, people <laughs> like you are, are important in just um, in sharing these stories, you know, for them to reach a lot of people, life stories. Um, in, a, in a perfect world, there would be something called Life's Anonymous, <laughs> where, you know, everyone can actually at least once a week, I have some kind of opportunity to talk about all of these things that matter, you know, mental health, identity, substance abuse, you know, a lot pains us collectively as a society. And to have a place where we can all talk about it and all share these things, um, and for them to also just reach, uh, reach, reach, rich, rich, Lord, reach um, a bigger audience. I think that's important. And yeah, that's that's why I agreed to doing this outside of wanting to be famous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 
I'm glad you said that because when I started this channel, I thought um, we we really do not have a platform to be open and be ourselves and talk about life struggles, mental health issues, and as um, in my culture, for as as an example, it's not very cool. Um, to not be able to drink like other people are able to drink. It's not very cool um, for, you know, like a lot of things that we view as enjoyment and as entertainment. Um, but I think with the society that we belong to, with the communities that we stay in, and with our background, our cultural backgrounds, what is it, in your opinion, um, uh, societal numbing and mental health in your environment? What is your opinion on societal numbing and mental health in your environment? Um, so it's, it's, it's a few things, right? Um, I think that first, the environment is difficult because no one knows how to cope with any specific thing, um, which just makes it difficult. So we just either reach out to what we believe is tried and tested, or we just ignore it or hope it goes away. Um, so, when I think of the idea of numbing, right, from people who look like me, people who sound like me, and people who don't even look like me or sound like me, it's just this, this thing of life being difficult and us turning to sex, to food, to drugs, to alcohol, um, and sometimes dangerously to religion too. Um, that is that is one a function of not wanting to feel what you are feeling, um, which is which results in, in, in addiction in most cases. And I don't think that there is a there is an understanding of the human condition that appreciates the individual, right? In any of the so solutions that um, you and I have been exposed to as Black people in South Africa, as Black humans in South Africa, you know, when we are faced with any difficulty, right, what we'll be told to do is pray, right? But no one has actually even taken the time to um, help us define this God for us, you know, our God is from the Methodist Church. Our God is from the Lutheran Church or the Catholic Church, you know. Mm -hmm. And no adult ever sat us down to actually help us figure out if this version of God is even going to work mm -hmm. for us. Um, mm -hmm. So that solution isn't going to work because, you know, here I am going through something and I'm meant to pray to whom and who is this mm. God and what do they do? Mm. Okay, it's the God of the Old Testament, the New Testament. I don't understand all of that. You mm. know, it's the God of Jesus. So it's 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 difficult um, in that sense, right? Of like religion for people like us. If it works for you, that's beautiful. But I find that with a lot of us, that might not work, and it might work if you've appreciated that God who has handed down to you from your parents and from their grand, from their parents too, that generational God. It, it, if you've taken the time to truly understand that God as yourself, then that will absolutely work for you. Um, and from an addiction perspective, right, from a pain avoidance perspective, right, um, there's just a lot of negative stigma um, that is attached on 
and all of that, you know, um, if anyone just takes the time to have empathy. So the, my thoughts are that there's just generally a lack of empathy, um, particularly around addiction and mental health. Um, and for people like you and I in this country, honestly, the most of what I've heard is pray. Um, and yeah, that's that's generally my 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 thinking around um, addiction and mental health in 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 my environment. But you know, I think it is changing. Um, but then again, it's it's changing in the very middle class um, in the very middle class. Um, societies society in, in, in the middle class community but like even then right what i'm noticing is that this change that is happening is it's, it's look it's good because it's awareness people have become quite aware of like mental health um and well-being and people are taking cognizance of the fact that like maybe drinking too much isn't so good, maybe doing so much drugs, maybe sleeping around. People are figuring that out. But like there's another sickness that is there. And for me, I find that like accumulation of things, um, people want to have mental fortitude, you know, so that they can um, work harder, hustle harder and get nice things and live well. Um, mm -hmm. So it's still quite there, you know. Um, consumerism is is the silent killer, mm. which really overshadows um, emotional and mental well being. Because people think that, like, once they are in a um, emotionally balanced state, a mentally balanced state, or even a spiritually balanced state, it's going to springboard them to a very narrowly defined sense of success. Um, so I think there are just a lot of challenges and um, it just also just breaks my heart that this very middle class um, access to this awareness that is still just so middle class that it's not reaching everybody in the way that it absolutely needs to, you know? Um, it's just... It's just for people like you and me. And, mm. you know, you know that like between the two of us, we're part of the 2% as far as Black people go in this country. You mm. know, there were, there were a whole other, there were, I mean, we have a big Black population mm -hmm. that might not be having these conversations or thinking like this. Mm. So, yeah, the, the, my my language is is escaping me, and I I want to use very academic terms. So yeah. the imbalances in our society really really worry me as far as awareness towards these very critical conversations. Um, you know, you know when you say um the population of black people in South Africa is 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 very large, it is. I think um, South Africa, if I'm not mistaken, is one of the only countries um, that is, 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 has gone through a system of apartheid the way that we have gone through that system of apartheid, you know. Um, I haven't read of any other society or any other country experiencing apartheid in the form that we um, as South Africans experienced it with 95% uh, of the population uh, being segregated by the 5%, you know? And I think when it comes to mental health issues in our environment, it has um, been a really serious uh, discrepancy um, because of our history um, in South Africa, you know, <laughs> the the psychologists that that used to uh, practice in South Africa in the seventies, when uh, psychology was 
um, a norm everywhere else in the world, they studied abroad. They only were able to um, understand West Western psychology. And then what happened was they used their knowledge around Western psychology to, to implement, to help them put a system like apartheid into place. And uh, mm-hmm. two of the um, leaders, apartheid leaders, were actually qualified psychologists. And, and what happened was then um, the majority of the people in the country had no access to mental health. Um, mm. services they had no access to um, awareness um, and that's why you know when we speak to our parents and we tell them I'm not feeling well it is easy for them to say um, mm. everything will be okay Nkulunkulu will take care of you um, or more culturally, they would say to you, if you if you start experiencing mental health difficulties, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they will turn around and say to you, you know, it might be mm, mm, or it might mm, be a spiritual link to it because um, our culture you know, uh, we believe mm. in threefold type of um, a higher power, you know, and mm. as an African being, we literally have like eight characteristics that that um, influence our personalities. But we'll speak mm. about that at another time. So looking at that, Looking at our Mm. understanding on the mental health perspective as South Africans, um, and remember too that just because I'm a Black South African and you're a Black South African, another Black person from any other country in in Africa does not have the same experience, does not have the same Mm. culture. Mm. I want to find art from you i'm interested in in finding out like do you think that there is enough access to mental health services especially around substance abuse um which is literally in in the black community it is one of the major things that are mm. are the beginnings of gender-based violence. They are the beginnings mm. of violence. They're the beginnings of accidental deaths. They're the beginnings of mm. abuse. They're the beginnings of all of that. So um, would you mind speaking to me about um, access to mental health, uh, especially around substance abuse? Jeez. So I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to digest what you brought up about um the architects of apartheid and it actually being psychological warfare, you know, um, that's, that's a terrifying thing. Um, so I don't, so the politics of this country, I just want to get this out of the way because I don't want to have a political conversation. Um, if, if a government cannot provide electricity, if a government can create environments like life is city menu and that happened, um, it just paints just a terrible, terrible picture, right? And again, there's this, there's this discomfort within myself about being a middle-class person because what we have done um, is taken all of these things that government needs to be in charge of and we've outsourced them proudly and willingly to the private sector you know um so education for example you know we saw governments let the education system essentially fail and we were all too happy to take our kids to private schools we saw government fail in health completely, and we're all too happy to go to private hospitals. Um, And now it's happening with electricity where government is failing and everyone is just so happy to get their solar panels. 
you know, and that is just greatly upsetting to me because at some point we are not going to have anything to go to anymore. You know, um, there is no access to to mental health services um, that can make any real difference. Um, my thinking about mental health um, is, for me, a community-based solution. Um, because government is not coming. And, you know, I've been to therapy on and off since I was maybe 13 years old. Um, and again, it's because of the privilege I have. And, you know, I want to say that it is effective in um, identifying a lot of things um, with, your, with yourself. Um, but, the biggest solution in my life right now in terms of my mental health has actually been through connection, right? And able and being able and having opportunities and safe spaces to speak about my experiences, um, to speak about my struggles, to speak about the turbulences I have in my life, you know, and that that is connection, that is community, and that is something that therapy um, cannot offer you. I don't think it can offer you community and connection. Um, I think that happens um, with with community and 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 connection with with people, right? And I don't. Again, I don't I don't have the statistics, I don't have the numbers, but I think that largely um, the the broader black community is losing a lot of connection. Um, kids used to play in the streets all the time. Everyone in the street knew exactly who everyone is. Anyone can leave could leave their kids with anybody. Um, there was just that kind of connection in the in the community that black people had and reliance on each other, you know, lending sugar, lending eggs, lending vegetables, uh, sharing, you know. Um, and just also, you know, the use of public transport, something as small as the use of public transport where people actually saw each other and could have conversations with each other, you know? Those things were keeping us together from a mental health perspective. Not everybody is in their cars, right? And driving alone mm. to work. I mean, it's devastating when you're in traffic mm. and there are literally thousands of us and we're alone in these cars and we're not connecting, mm. you know? So that that's just completely lost, right? Um, and it, it, it absolutely pains me to me. Um, and that for me was, was the thing that was keeping us together. I mean, we went through the worst as a society um, with the apartheid, apartheid, with the apartheid <laughs> regime, you know? Say but it properly. I, so apartheid. I gotta call a thing a thing. Apartheid, call a thing a thing. But, I genuinely believe that we're largely able to weather those very difficult conditions because we actually really had each other and we had each other's backs and we knew who everybody was, you know? Um, and that's just not available anymore. Um, and when that's not available, it creates isolation and it creates addiction and it creates loneliness and it creates these very ripe conditions for a breakdown in mental well-being and spiritual well-being you know you cannot experience spirituality in isolation it's something that you receive and give you know and these things are just not possible in isolation um so the, so to answer your question in short, there isn't access to it. No, there isn't access to it from the point of, of therapy, from the point of psychologists and psychiatry, 
there isn't access to it in that in that in that regard, and there isn't access to it um, from each other, um, from from connection and community. All right, so um, you know, Tina, as um, Black South Africans, we come from a culture of Ubuntu. We come from a culture of the entire village raising um, children. We come from a culture where your mom is my mom and my mom is your mom. We come from a culture where everyone's malume is malume. And um, I hear you when you talk about the access to what it is that we know, you know, what it is that we come from and not having access to that. We also don't have access to mental health institutions, therapy, psychotherapy, mm -hmm. whatever. What I would like for us to speak about is um, your experience, your experience being a citizen of South Africa, being a South African. What is your experience with your chosen mode of maintaining a life of emotional well-being, well-balanced, I think, uh, considering these challenges that you have faced on your journey um, to this well-lived life. Um, can you um, just break down for me what makes your life worth living um, mm -hmm. right now with all the challenges that you have? Oh my gosh. Um, so I think it goes back to what I was saying before, you know, um, I mentioned that I struggled, well, not struggled. I have seen, I've been to therapy since I was essentially of the age of 13. And it is, okay, so that is what it is, right? Because of my own mental, um, dynamics of how my environment was shaped, you know, about essentially coming from a single parent home, about not being um, a heterosexual man in this very masculine society, um, body dysmorphia, you know, um, you know, sexual assault. So that that is, that is my my thing has been therapy, right? And um, to be perfectly honest, what it did is just let me know that these are the challenges that I have. Um, and there was a lot of language um, in my therapy sessions, which um, just pointed out to how... Um, how these things would um, give me the, the anxieties I have. And it would just answer the why I am the way I am, you know? And I don't know if it ever came with a solution. Um, and I don't know if I was particularly looking for a solution. No, I suppose I was. You know, you spend good money on therapy sessions. I was looking to be... Um, to rid myself of all of these things that weigh me down. Um, and what I found has worked, and I need to go back to therapy because it's important um, for you to actually identify those things and to have a, a professional help you navigate what could be very dangerous territory right um and actually figure out if something else is going on right because our brains do process things very differently and there are a lot of mental conditions that function outside of um, a societal societal events and societal experiences um and my my solution, my 
my answer, my 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 truth has come about in support groups. Um, so I I drank a lot, right? I drank a lot, a lot, a lot, and it just landed me in a place where I didn't want to live any longer. Um, and when I found support um, in meetings where I could share my experiences and have other people share their experiences and literature, you know, um, it made me feel, and it makes me feel even right now that number one, I am not alone. I can connect with people on the level of my pain that I can shine light on what used to be so in the dark and what used to be so private and what used to also, the privacy of, psych of, of psychology also, right? It's just you and this other person talking about this and you just move on with your life. But like with support groups, there are a lot of you, you know, and that's community and that's connection and that's you shining light on 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 the darkness that you have um i'm i'm, I'm trying to to answer your your question as honestly as possible um so i think that is that has been my my way of navigating that um community truth um acceptance and God as I understand God. And it's so strange um, that my understanding of God now has brought me back to church, right? Because the, the God of church was not resonating with me. And I think that's why I stopped going to church. But now um, that I've opened myself to a God of my own understanding, I realize that Church for me is um, acts as a a ritual, you know. I'm Catholic, so it's quite ritualistic, you know. It acts as a ritual for me to experience God like that, you know. Um, and I think as, as as Black people, we actually are. Um, quite ritualistic and I think maybe it's a human thing we do believe in our rituals in waking up and doing this and then going to this place we need to do things that that agree with our spirit right and church offers me that and all that needs to happen there for an hour is a connection with God you know and standing and praying and singing um and it can still function in the realm of my of the god of my understanding you know um god can't be confined in a bible even though you read the bible god can't be confined in a denomination in a religion you know but we need rituals and we need things to to hold on to and to identify with and to use as tools to build ourselves um and church is also a great source of community. But, you know, there are those churches where people just come for service and leave. And there isn't connection after the fact. Um, so my, my, my thing with a living um, a full life um, is, again, community and connection. Um, efforting to have really authentic relationships with your friends, with your colleagues, you know, um, trying to run away from the narrative of how are you and fine, you know, finding something else to say. Um, being curious about the people you see every day, you know. Um, yeah, curiosity about people. Um, my solution is 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 the one that I'm going to collectively find with others that I exist with every day. Um, it's quite long-winded, my answer. Um, 
<laughs> but it's, 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 it's a difficult thing to to define, you know, when it really is something that is so accessible and that exists in all of us. Every single one of us wants to be seen and heard and loved and acknowledged, right? Um, which is particularly hard for someone who does not grow up as a as a binary heterosexual man, you know, to be seen, to be heard, to be loved, to be understood, and to have other people to see, to love, to understand, and to have other people who look like you, you know, represent what you represent, you know. So my, my, my greater solution is just in everybody, in connection with everybody. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to leave it there. Um, cause I, like I said, it's not properly defined, but I think, I think you get what I'm saying for the most part. No, um, most definitely. I, I get what you're saying. I want, um, you know, as you were talking, I, I, I heard you speak of this, your newly found, um, God, um, would you like to elaborate on that? Um, are you are you able to sort of explain uh, from your understanding how one can redefine um, their understanding of who God is uh, versus um, what we grew up with? at church what we read about in in the bible um so and finding and finding god um you have to be curious i think curiosity is the is the answer to finding a lot of things i think you have to be really really curious um about how you got to where you got in your in your life, where you stand right now, you have to be curious about how you got here. And you have to appreciate the many, 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 many things. Essentially, in finding God and defining God for yourself as anybody, well, let me speak about myself. Um, I found myself in a very difficult position, right? Um, where, like I said, um, I didn't want to live any longer. And I was told that, like, I need to believe in a power greater than myself to get me out of this, right? Um, and then the first thing that happened is I got curious, right? I went to everybody that I know who believes in God, what that means to them, right? And I got different answers. The best answer that I got um, was from a friend of mine that God is in the sea king, right? God exists in you searching for God. A prayer is you reaching out to God. That is part of finding God, right? Um, that intentional kind of, of seeking, right? For me, what I found is that I had to be really, really curious. I had to be curious about how I find myself where I stand. Um, so many things had to happen for me to even meet you, to me. Um, so many things. Um, it can't be just me. I cannot find myself here after so many events transpired and believe that it is by random acts of man. Um, I cannot be born with all of the things that I have been born with um, and all of these natural urges that I've been born with, which I take so far sometimes and believe that it is just for me to do with that as I will. Um, 
I cannot place myself at the center of myself when there is just so much around me that I cannot control, you know. Um, and control is a thing that I really, really struggle with. I really, really, really struggle with control and the illusion of control. Um, and for me, my salvation um, has to come from believing that in any situation I find myself in, in any difficult situation I find myself in, in good situation I find myself in that it is destined it is holy it is divine um, so I don't fight it so that I accept it um Because I know that in it, there is a bigger bowl that I'm in that somebody is continuously pouring in. Um, that's somebody, well, God. Um, I have to believe that whatever I'm going through is going to impact another person's life. Um, I have to believe that whatever I say is going to impact someone's life. And that for me is divinity because I cannot believe that my influence can be that, can be that impact on someone's life. I don't know if I answered your question, but that was my best effort. Um, yeah, you you did, and um, I'm 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 really uh, grateful for you know talking to me about that. You know, recently I I had to go through um, the exercise of trying to understand who this power that's greater than myself is, and it is is very difficult for us to to go on that journey because not only um, do we have and believe in, 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 in ancestors, we appreciate Mother Earth. Um, I appreciate um, the material, the tangible and the intangible, um, which in my understanding are all related um, to God. Um, at the end of the day, and it, it's difficult for people who struggle with mental health issues, substance abuse um, issues, to to find a higher power, to to find something that they can surrender to uh, their creator, um, whoever it is that is protecting them, whoever it is that has kept them alive, even through the worst times, you know? So thank mm. you for, for breaking that down for me. Um, what would you say to somebody who you have just met and comes to you and says, listen, I am lost. I don't know what to do. I am, um, I have a problem with, um, an addiction of some sort, uh, sex, maybe drugs, maybe alcohol, maybe food, maybe whatever. Um, what is the most important thing you would say to a person who doesn't have the awareness that we spoke about, who doesn't have the excess that we spoke about, um, who is coming to you and saying, Tato, please, I see your life has changed. Will you please um, explain to me or will you please tell me how you did it how would you answer um, that person I think first I would acknowledge their pain um, and I would impart on them that um 
what they are going through as hard as it is that nothing in this world is permanent um and i'd have a conversation with them about who they have in their lives right now um and what their support looks like um i think i'd also impart on them that this is real life and was supposed to go through difficult things um and i and i and i'm trying in my head that sounds really harsh but i would impart on them that this is real life and we're supposed to go through difficult things um if for anything um to grow um and so look to me um i think like first of all i think life is really really hard for everybody um i think if life is not hard for you then you're having really good sex and you're having really good drugs and you're having really good alcohol um if life is not hard for you you're not paying attention and whatever is helping you not paying attention is fantastic it's working for you and it's not going to work for a long time um that's the reality of it life is hard right but like that's not the only thing it is but that is how it can stay if you don't pay attention right um i think that the things that make life difficult are wanting life to be different at any given point it is being uncomfortable with any situation when i am happy i am incredibly uncomfortable i am incredibly uncomfortable when i'm happy because i am obsessed with how long it's going to last i'm obsessed about whether i deserve it um and i think these are the things that make anyone's life difficult and these are the things that people want to shift in their lives and people are thinking about change when people want their situations to change um first they want it to happen instant instantly which just is just never going to happen right um and i'm personally not I'm personally i'm personally not i'm not equipped to give anyone um advice you know if anyone does come to me and says that their life are, is just going through whatever is going through the only thing i can offer them is a conversation the only thing i can offer them is my experiences um and these are just my experiences that in this life there is pain there is sorrow there is joy there is happiness and those things can happen in one day right and those things can actually happen in the space of an hour right um hours mine is just not to be obsessed with it as and when it is happening right mine is to accept that it's happening mine is to accept that it is ephemeral um yeah and mine is to actually accept that i actually have no control i have absolutely no control um my my biggest difficulty um is um the struggle to accept the difficult emotions every emotion is difficult for me so mine is 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 just struggling to accept right um so my solution is to try to accept acknowledge that it's happening acknowledge the pain acknowledge the joy acknowledge the sorrow and let it actually work its way through me you know and not fight it um mm. and to fucking talk about it you know i will not <laughs> to pass here go ahead <laughs> you know talk about it you know like if you don't know by now that your brain is your biggest enemy then i'm telling you that like that's the first thing you need to understand you know <laughs> your mind is your biggest enemy it is 
that bitch is always working against you. <laughs> just working against you consistently, you know. <laughs> and you cannot, you cannot address the mind with the mind. You know, when your mind is like, oh my gosh, you're obsessing over things. You're obsessing over things. And you're like, okay, you need to stop. You need to stop. You need to stop. It's like, oh my gosh, you're chubby. Oh my gosh, no, you look fine. You look fine. I mean, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. You cannot fight the mind with the mind. You have to open up your mouth, right? You have to open up your mouth and say something. It needs to find its way out of you. Yeah. It needs to find its way out of you, you know? So speak, speak, shout it out, you know? And, <laughs> and know, know where your words are going to come out and find light, you know, light that is going to shine darkness into your life. Don't do it on social media, you know. <laughs> that is not, that is not, that is not speaking your truth. That is damping or, you know, I'm pretty sure social media helps people, but I'm not one of those people that, that is just damping, you know, and that is opening yourself up to really, really mean people. Um, just write it down, write it down. Speak to a friend, speak to a loved one. And if you do not have friends and loved ones, find them. Yes. Um, find them. Understand that, like, you cannot survive this difficult thing that you're going through alone. Alone. You, no. That will never happen. That, is, that option is not available in your country. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. You know, um, but the, together, to somebody, you know, um, someone, anyone that you know is not going to to judge you. Shit. Yeah, to shit on what you feel. Um, or write it down. Write it down, hold it up, and then burn it. But don't... <laughs> you don't know do what? That. You uh, know what? You know what, Tato? I, will, I just want to bring in something very quickly. Um, we have um, um, societies and cultures that make it difficult for people to talk. It uh, mm. cultures that make it difficult for a person who is struggling to be able to say, hey, I need help. I can't do this by mm. myself. And I think mm. also mm. some sort of cultural shift needs to happen where mm. we can say, I am not okay. You know, mm. I am not okay. Mm. And it, the the person listening to a person who's saying, I am not okay, should be... Mm. Um, uh, what's that word? Um, empathetic enough to say mm. it's okay not to be okay. Um, mm. I'm here, mm. I'm your ear. Talk to me. What's going on? It is okay not to be okay. And once we mm. say that it's okay not to be okay, then we can get into that whole um mindset of saying mm. if it's okay not to be okay perhaps i can find help perhaps i can google perhaps i can ask my neighbor perhaps i can mm. you know i can find out how people are recovering because as as south africans especially we have got um a communal trauma we have got um, traumas that we haven't even dealt with and and mm. we look upon government who had the truth and reconciliation commission but haven't really touched on the personal um, traumas that people have experienced in this country and then now we watch the news we get traumatized we we watch tv and another lady has been killed by her husband or a boyfriend, another guy has been kidnapped. This has happened. That has happened. And we just move on. And it's, and yeah. people say to you, oh, Tato, 
um, you are a grown ass man. Get off your butt and just move on, which I feel is um, is unfair um, on us, you know. And I think it's a it's mm. a it's a shift that we need to do as individuals and hopefully influence um, society one step at a time. With that said, I would like to find out from you. What sort of routines do you follow? Do you have routines that help you stay emotionally well balanced to look after your mental well-being, um, your body, your diet? What is it that you do on a daily basis um, that um, keeps you where you are right now? Um. Sorry, I just want to touch on that thing about like a cultural societal shift. Um, I'm so worried about language like that and an idea like that because who is going to do that? <laughs> we absolutely need all these things that we say we need, but it stresses me out. When someone is, says something like what you said, we need a cultural societal shift, um, it makes me feel, it stresses me out because everyone has some sort of solution, right, for, for these things, just to say we need a cultural societal shift. But who's going to do it? You know, who is going to be that person? You know, is it you? Is it me? Who is going to cause the societal shift that we apparently need? Um, to answer your question about, um, ha, I don't have a daily routine. Um, I think that's definitely something that I need to work towards. Um, I used to have daily routines, but for some other reason, I lose them. Um, I used to run every morning. I've lost that. I used to do yoga every morning. I've lost that. I used to meditate every morning, and I've lost that. So that's me in the last 10 years. I was able to practice these things quite consistently and then ultimately lose them. Um, and I have to tell you the truth because practicing a daily routine is a change agent for your life, how you think, right? And I'm convinced that like my hyper ego is so strong that when it sees this change, it just bulks up, it hulks up and it's like, no, 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 we will not change for the better, we are going to repeat our old patterns so we stay alive in the state. That is how strong the hyper ego is. So definitely I do need um, a daily routine, but what works that I do daily is commune with my friends, um, I have somebody every day between waking up and nine o'clock. I will always have somebody who cares about who I, how I am and who will ask me. And I have those people too who I will ask how they are. Um, and that process of checking in every morning is somewhat of a routine and at night as well, there will be somebody who asks me how I am, how is my day, and there'll be me asking somebody. So that is a routine in its own sense um, that helps me stay connected. Um, and I pray when I pray, I'd love to say that like, you know, I wake up every morning and I say a prayer and I thank the Lord Jesus. Um, <laughs> I don't. Um, I definitely need to pray more. Um, I need to take long. I need to. I walk, but it's not a routine. But I, a week will not pass without me completing at least a two-kilometer walk. 
I walk. Um, and yeah, that's those are my my routines essentially. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. So, um, I think we have covered quite a lot um, with our conversation, and I, you know, I am eternally grateful. Yes. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Yes, that got recorded and I'm keeping it. <laughs> okay, so I think we're done. Um, I think we're done. I think we covered everything. We've covered quite a lot. And um, if you don't mind, I always ask this with people I talk to. Would you mind coming back on at, an, at another time perhaps to talk about specific topics that we might find um, interesting and may want to elaborate on um, topics such as why meditation and yoga used to be in your routine and you would like to have it back what is the importance of uh, spirituality what is the importance of um, um, you know talking to people what the concepts of one day at a time mean and and all of that would you mind coming back at another time to do that with me girl are you paying me next time because i'm doing this for free <laughs> um, <laughs> no absolutely do me i would love to be back to talk to you about these things that truly just matter Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me today and for talking to me. And um, I will see you next time. I really appreciate you giving me your time. Thank you so much, Dumi, for having me. Um, have a wonderful day. And goodbye to your listeners. Cheers, listeners. <laughs> All 47 of them. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone matters. Oh, man. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, thank you, Tato. Thank you. Are we done? Are, are we done? Oh, yes, gosh. we done. How long are we going for? Oh, gosh. Thank you, darling. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I just... I just, it's just, I don't mind saying it in meetings, but it's just tough for me to. I mean, I mean you said, you said you, you drink too much. You used to drink too much. So that's enough, you know, yeah. because not everybody is able to say um, uh, that until they come in and they're able to acknowledge it. But remember, the people I've got following me um, are not all alcoholics and addicts uh so oh, yeah. don't follow me yeah. to find out about what's available kind of help mental health issues spirituality so i think we covered all three um of the yeah. things i yeah. talk about on my channel which is which is really awesome for me you know so mm. oh, i appreciate it man thank you so much thank you so much i need to run I'm going to a meeting at two o'clock and I need to pick up a newcomer. So we done. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.